Hey, Doc Brown. This is Timothy Tew. I was one of your students in Wilmington, Delaware last year, 2009, in the summer. Um, I was a kid who was dancing a lot at that girl's birthday party. Anyway, I promised you my mnemonic to remember pharyngeal arches, right? Because that's a very important subject for step one, but no one ever wants to memorize it because it's crazy. It's too crazy. So, let's begin. Let's start off by making a little table, okay? Arch, nerve, artery, mesoderm, and neural crest. All right, all right. There we go. Let's label this. One, two, three, four, six. So we got a blank table here, but we know we're going to fill it with very important stuff, right? Because these arches, they make some important stuff. So before we fill in the table, let's just write down what they make. They make some important stuff. Right? They make some important stuff. Right? One, two, three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's this over here? Why are four and six on the same line? Well, the stuff they make is shared. So they share this line. They're together because the stuff they make is shared. Okay, we'll see why. We'll see why. So it might be easier if we fill in the rest of the blanks, and then that way, you know, we can see everything, and then it'll be easier to remember. All right, so let's just fill in the blanks. All right, okay. All right, this one's cranial nerve nine. Also the laryngeal. And same for number six. All right, now let's go with some arteries. You know, number three gets a little ICA action. Okay. What about number four? That gets the aortic arch. The right subclavian. Six gets some pulmonary. As well as the, the old ductus. The old ductus arteriosus. Okay. This is what we got so far. All right, now let's fill in this mesoderm column. Mastication. Okay. Facial expression. Right. Stapede. This. So remember. One is mastication, two is facial expression, stapedius. Let's move on. For three will be the style of pharyngeus. Number four will give rise to cricothyroid. Oop, spelled that wrong. And number six gives rise to everything in the larynx except the old cricothyroid. Okay, now let's work on the neural crest. All right, so this one, number one, gets the maxilla, the mandible, incus, and the malleus. Okay, two gets some stapes, some styloid. Okay, four gets a little thyroid action. In cartilage form, right? And number six gets other cartilage. All right. Whoa, this is a bit overwhelming, you know. We broke it down so it's nice and simple, but there's still so much for us to remember. All right. Well, let's see. So these arches make some important stuff. All right. Let's, let's circle these letters. M, S, I, and S, H. Right? Stuff. 
two arches, two letters. All right, cool. Well, how in the world am I gonna remember that the first arch gives rise to this nerve? Well, what's another name for it? It's the mandibular, right? What does that begin with? It begins with M. M and M. And lo and behold, muscles of mastication, maxilla, mandible, and malleus. Incus, you'll have to remember that on your own, but at least we broke it down. First arch, M, right? Okay. Number two. All right, all right. Well, let's see. What's another name for this nerve? It's the facial nerve, right? Cool. Well, that's how you remember it does the facial expressions. Facial nerve, facial expressions. What's a, what's a good facial expression? Let's see, uh, smile, right? Smiling it. That's a good facial expression. Well, how's that link here? Facial nerve, facial expression, smile. Alright, so S for sum, S for smile, S for stapedius, S for stapes, S for styloid. Whoa, alright. How about three? Three's pretty important, right? Three makes some important things. Alright, Roman numeral nine starts with an I. I C A, I, okay. Now, what about this? Stylopharyngeus, how am I going to remember that? Alright, well, what's another name for this nerve? That's the old glosso pharyngeal, right? Glosso pharyngeal stylopharyngeus. Cool. That makes it a bit easier. Alright, how about number four? Well, four and six come in a pair, right? They make some important stuff, and they're shared. But four is above six. Four comes first, so it always wants the first pick, right? So it picks the laryngeal nerve before six can, so it gets the superior part, right? It wants the best. It comes first, it gets the best, gives six the rest. Six gets the recurrent. What's 4 plus 6? That's 10, right? 4 plus 6 is 10. 4 comes first, it gets the best, gives 6 the rest. All right, well, let's apply this over here. What's the coolest artery in the body? It's the aorta, right? So number 4 gets first choice. It wants the aortic arch. 6 gets second dibs. So it gets stuck with the pulmonary artery instead. Okay, and four also gets the right subclavian, six, you know, it gets the ductus arteriosus. And that's, how often is that patent, you know? Most adults, you know, no ductus arteriosus, but six gets stuck with it. Okay, cool. Cricothyroid and thyroid cartilage. Those are pretty big things, right? Everyone knows these things. That's why four wants it. It wants the best, right? It wants the best. Give six the rest. Six gets everything else besides the cricothyroid in the larynx, and it gets all the other cartilage. Because four wants the best, six gets the rest. All right, cool. But that can't be everything, right? Yeah, there's some other things we have to put. So let's make another column here. For pouch. Okay, let's see. What's uh, some important things? This one makes a little middle ear. Right, the middle ear. Here we got the inferior parathyroid, the thymus, and four gets the superior. All right. Again, one's M, so it gets everything that begins with an M, including the middle ear, okay? 
three is the I, right? Three is I. So three gets the inferior parathyroid. Okay, and in, in the thymus, that's pretty important, right? You need the thymus when you're growing up, so three gets it, three gets it. But four, four doesn't want to be left without, you know? Even though it comes after three, it's used to getting the first choice, right? So it gets the superior parathyroid, right? It wants to be consistent. It wants the best in everything. It gets the superior parathyroid, superior laryngeal, right? And all these cool things here. All right, that's cool. But more, more, more. I want more. I want more. All right. Something else I left out here. That's the old hyoid, right? That sounds familiar, right? The hyoid. What's the higher? You know, you got the lesser horn, you got the greater horn, you got the lower body, you got the upper body. How can you remember that? All right, well, two and three give rise to those parts of the hyoid, right? But which ones? Right? You got the lesser horn, upper body, right? And you got the greater horn, and the lower body. Okay, how do you remember that? How do you remember that? Well, let's see. Two. Everyone can draw a two, right? Well, what's the first part of drawing a two? You start out with this, right? Well, what happens when you do that? That kind of looks like a breast, right? That looks like some upper body action. And what, what's the next part of the two? It's this part. But that kind of looks like a horn. Right? So it gets the upper body and the lesser horn. Lesser because it's below. Alright. How about the three? There's no way you can make the three into the greater horn and the lower body, right? Well, just rotate it. Okay? So now you got the three rotated. That kind of looks like that some lower body, you know? Everyone likes some lower body. So then you can just add some horns too if you want, right? And they're greater horns because they're above, right? Lower body, greater horns. Upper body, lesser horns. So the two gets the upper body lesser horns, three gets, lower body, greater horn. See, you don't even have to be able to read my handwriting, you know? You don't even have to be able to read. You just need to be able to draw, you know? So, you can't read that. It's okay, because you remember that two becomes upper body, lesser horn, and three becomes lower body and greater horn. All right, well... That might seem complete, but I got one more thing for you, okay? Facial nerve. What else does that innervate? Well, that's the... Let's see. Right? This innervates... The submandibular... And sublingual gland. Right? Both of these begin with S, right? Both of these begin with S, and we know so do so the smiles, the pedius, stapes, and styloid, right? So here we go. All you need to remember is that these pharyngeal arches make some important stuff. So there's my mnemonic, Dr. Barone. Um, I hope you found it, you know, in, nice and uh, easy to follow. I hope you find it useful and that you can show it to your students. It helped me remember these things. Hopefully it can help others remember these. Uh, feel free to use it in your review sessions. And if you have room in your book, you know, you can throw it in there. I'd love that. Just give me a little credit, you know, that'd be good. But just wanted to give back because 
you know, your mnemonics help me out a lot. So I just wanted to give back to you. All right? So just in case you missed anything, okay, just want to make sure you're able to get everything. And there we go. Remember these, and you're golden.